excited that Michael Frings um, has been able to join us today, um, all the way from across the pond in Germany. Um, Michael, uh, again, longtime user of, of Global Mapper. Um, got some very interesting use cases that we've heard about. Um, there are, I believe, case studies that he uh, has published on our website. I'm getting some nod from my colleagues here. So if you, if you want to see some more of Michael's work, you can certainly go there. Um, Michael uh, is a veteran in the field of information technology with 25 years experience uh, in the fields of high performance computing, cybersecurity, and applied technology. Uh, he was a reserve officer in the German army. He served during Oper Operation Enduring Freedom and IASF in Afghanistan. And I'm quoting him here. This is a quote from, from Michael. Um, UAV technology and geoinformatics are some of today's most appealing technology disciplines. Capturing real life data and turning them into valuable information is, a cha is as challenging as it is exciting. Now, what we're going to hear from today, what um, Michael is going to talk about is uh, a case study where we look at the position of advertising polls and how the terrain can determine that. Now, it's not something you often think of when you're driving along the road, but obviously visibility is key to providing return on investment when you're when you're positioning those advertising polls. So, Michael, are we hearing you today? Yes, hi, David. Okay, great to hear. How are things in Germany today, Michael? Well, it's a lovely sunny day. Great to hear it. Well, so we're going to hand our, our presentation over to Michael and uh, take it away. Excellent. Thank you very much, David. All right. So in the next uh, couple of minutes, um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the positioning of uh, advertising poets uh, in our projects. And um, as uh, the subtitle said, when it comes to um, this, uh, sorry, I just have to quickly adjusts my my tools wait a sec please when it comes uh, to uh, to this um, uh, expression to this title then you do you do not think uh, particularly directly on uh, 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 land surveying and uh, uh, geo positioning however this is uh, basically a requirement uh, that was uh, uh, born out of our uh, daily work where we do um, uh, fly UAV uh, uh, projects for the classical land surveying, pro uh, uh, land surveying process in uh, large scale areas. And at the end of the day, our customer ha uh, had to look uh, beyond the horizon, beyond the horizon of, the, of that uh, particular area project area and had to say had to to consider the entire surrounding in uh, in the um, uh, in his um, um, uh, advertising uh, process and assessment so and the only thing that such an uh, a project can do to wave a flag to show its its existence in the land is to put a, a pole a very high pole somewhere close to the project and then have a big advertisement on a put on it so what we do is basically uh, the situation uh, why we do that what we do is uh, based on the fact that we are um, uh, having a very disastrous situation here over in germany when it comes to the utilization of our highways our famous autobahn the last free uh, high speed car uh, driving experience in the world is actually congested like hell and you can hardly go uh, faster than 120 kilometers per hour because you face so many trucks on the highway, on the autobahn. Um, and simply this is a fact because 72% of our national freight traffic today is operated by trucks. Uh, imagine our, we introduced like 10, 15 years ago, a national road charge and today the revenue, the, the governmental revenue of this road charge for only for trucks is about 5 billion euros per year. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty big amount of, you can consider how many trucks are going, how many, uh, what distance in Germany. And it's not only German trucks, certainly it's a north, south, east, west um, uh, uh, transit country. We are in the middle of Europe, in Central Europe, uh, trucks from Poland uh, coming into Germany, driving to France, 
driving to Spain and vice versa, fruits from the southern uh, European countries are transported through Germany to Scandinavia. So there is a lot going on. We have a yearly transport performance of 480 billion ton kilometers, and this was only in 2017. And the disaster situation is not only the congestion on the highway, the fact is that these uh, trucks have to stop after eight hours of operation time and the truck driver has to get back, has to get some sleep. So there is simply not enough space uh, close to the, uh, on the highways, on their regular highway stations, and even not on the uh, uh, stations that are a little bit of, uh, far, located a little bit far away from the highway, they, they cannot accommodate all these trucks. And so you see, you face situations like you see it here in this picture. Uh, sometimes we have kilometers long queues in front, uh, in front of such truck stations and uh, the drivers are just resting on the highway, which is posing, particularly during nighttime, a very dangerous uh, situation. So there's uh, room for investment, and um, uh, we, uh, together with uh, our partner, who is a, a, a land surveyor, were hired by a company, an investment company, that is going to build 30 new truck centers across uh, Germany, but certainly in that, in that locations that are mostly congested. And we are, uh, from a project point of view, they get the guys who who uh, put the first uh, foot on the ground. So we do the the basic land development uh, surveying process. We 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 create the base data, the data foundation that is used later on for all um, associated parties in this uh, production and development process. The architects, the geolo geologists, the uh, infrastructure specialists, and even the marketing guys. And today we are talking about a marketing problem, actually. So as you have heard already from the previous um, uh, presentations, what we do is very much the same as our colleagues uh, from the, uh, from the uh, who, did, uh, who, who presented the first uh, presentation. So what we do is an aerial uh, photography process using an uh, UAV hexacopter platform. And uh, it's, it's basically a flying camera that produces uh, geo-reference pictures, uh, geo-referenced by ground control points. Uh, our areas of uh, operation is about uh, 15 hectares in size. We just today came back from a, from a project that was 18 hectares in size. And then what we do after we have collected like uh, 1,200, 1,500 uh, pictures uh, from the air, we, uh, we perform a photogrammetric analysis and create a digital elevation model and a digital autophoto. And once we have created that information, we drop it into Global Mapper. And you can see on the left hand, I was so free to put uh, the Global Mapper uh, icon wherever we work uh, with the pro uh, in the project, and you will see it, it's it's more and more. So then we start in Global Mapper. We start with point cloud classification. As uh, Katrina already showed it in, the, in her quick uh, presentation, we create uh, digital surface models and digital terrain models. Then we do uh, an initial grid calculation. The first thing that we provide to our customer usually is an autophoto and a five meter grid, which is far good, well, good enough to, uh, for the architects and for the planners. However, flying uh, such uh, UAV operation from 40 to 50 meter height. Again, I have to uh, uh, to admit exactly the same accuracy uh, from uh, from, my, from the previous speaker. We are in the range of uh, two centimeter in uh, uh, in 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 in, in uh, flat, and we are what uh, three centimeters in the height. So and this is because of uh, very very good pictures a lot of ground control points, 20, 20 to 30 ground, ground uh, control points, particularly their position there, where there are different, uh, uh, significant differences in height. Yeah, then we need, we, 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 we position more control points than we use normally when we do that in a very flat area. Um, Global Mapper helps us uh, with uh, vector extraction. 
slope analysis, break line analysis. Break lines are very interesting, interesting features and information for the planners who need to see how to fit a certain infrastructure into such uh, an area. And then finally, we deliver digital maps and autophotos to our customers. And that's basically the big project that takes us three, four days in flight operation and land surveying, plus another three, four days in uh, photogrammetry and uh, point cloud manipulation and uh, the, the creation of vectors and all these uh, data. But then it comes to marketing. And the customer, as I said in the beginning, had to look beyond the, beyond the horizon of that uh, micro, micro environment and has to consider the positioning and the uh, existence of this project in the, um, in the, in the, in the neighborhood. And uh, particularly in one of the first uh, projects that we had, it wasn't a flat area. It was um, surrounded by hills, uh, by a forest. There was a hill line exactly in front of the, uh, uh, of the truck center, of the future truck center that was dividing the line of sight between the east and the west into two half. And uh, we had to find a position for this advertising pole uh, that was good enough so that people uh, coming from the east, from the big city of Dortmund, uh, from the west, from the big city of Dortmund, uh, to that position could see uh, this uh, ad as early enough as possible enough. And the same way, for people coming from the east, from the large city of Kassel, uh, for them were the, we, had, we needed the same result. So the, the, challenging, the challenges are, what is the best position for that advertising pole? You know, so that it can, seen, being, can be seen uh, from far away and for the longest possible time. And you have, again, we are living in a free country when it comes to traffic. We have uh, trucks driving at 80 kilometers per hour. And we have the famous Porsche drivers who fly along with 250 kilometers per hour. So maybe we can find a way how to satisfy both users. And this is uh, particularly certainly uh, uh, answered by determining the optimal height of the pole. So not only the position of the pole, also the height of the pole. And if the pole doesn't live by itself, certainly along a highway, you have to consider uh, uh, legal regulation. So where and in, in what distance you can position such a pole along the highway? That's a very difficult uh, question. That's all part of the risk assessment at the end of the day. The first thing we did, we had to embed our uh, uh, self-generated geodata and uh, to embed it into um, the surrounding. What we did, we simply bought uh, geo information from the, from the uh, local government agency and uh, what we what we bought was a DTM five. Certainly, there's also available a DTM one. But for this uh, uh, use case, uh, we believe a DTM five, a five meter accuracy, is good enough. As DTM five is also used for uh, mobile phone uh, cell uh, estimation and uh, mobile phone tower operations. And we bought a, a digital autophoto with a forty meter. Uh, 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 accuracy, accuracy. We have uh, then uh, put this uh, DTM into Global Mapper. It came as an XYZ file. We convert that easily into um, a height grid, into a digital elevation model, and then we have embedded our high-res uh, DTM into this uh, new uh, large-scale DTM, and we started uh, to construct the 3D object of the advertising pool. Certainly, that was a very good, uh, very big challenge because uh, at the end of the day, the customer wants to see something, not only mathematical data, but they also want to see in, um, in, in, in a picture, a movie, yeah, where they see their, the future uh, 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 tower, because uh, the, uh, certainly the, uh, the, 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 the operator, the developer of this um, uh, uh, truck center has certainly also to convince the people from the uh, surrounding municipalities about, uh, the height and visibility uh, of the poles. For the highway, the, the pole has to be as visible as uh, long enough and from far enough as possible. But for a, a village, 
the municipality that's just around the corner these people they don't want to look 24 hours on that big illuminated advertising pole so it's a it's very challenging uh, situation lots of gifts and takes and that all these uh, requirements and concerns had to be satisfied so and the first thing we did we were we did a classical uav video fly around uh, we went and um, analyzed uh, some data here's another a uh, closer look uh, of the, the you see this greenish uh, area that's the that's the area that we have uh, produced the data that have pre pre that we have produced with the UAV and the rest is a 3D autophoto from uh, from the data that we have that we bought from the from the uh, from the government so we uh, by just by estimation and looking around in the 3D model we found like 10 uh, possible positions for the um, uh, for the advertising posts and we took our video drone we went on site and for every tower position we did a video fly around 360 degrees and photos that uh, gave us already good indication about the uh, line of sight and um, uh, the horizon um, but at the end of the day we have to prove it in a, math a mathematical way out of these uh, 10, we considered at the end of the day, three to be uh, good enough uh, to be the best candidates. And then with this uh, selection of three, our the developer started to talk to the uh, owners of the land. And finally, there was uh, this uh, selection of three was reduced to two. And then we had to uh, come back with a feasibility and a mathematical estimation. At the end of the day, you can see uh, the uh, on the south, the southwestern one. It, uh, pole is called WM3A. Yeah, this sits on a height of 313 meters, 40 centimeters. Uh, this pole was considered uh, to be the best one. Now, have a, having a closer look, we had to find then first the the, the closest position of this uh, advertising pole to the highway. And the regulation in Germany uh, says that if you go to 40 meters, and in this case, because of the hill line and the high trees in this forest, we had to go to, we had to decide for a 40 meter high pole. We had to, uh, we had, we have to consider a minimum distance to the highway of 100 meter. So we have a 100 meter buffer zone. Um, and um, yeah, well, it's nothing is easier than just telling Global Mapper to create a buffer zone of 100 meter along a line. So all we had to do is we create, we, we draw that yellow line along the highway, and then we let uh, uh, Global Mapper create a buffer zone and give it some some uh, some facts. And here we are with a 100 meter buffer zone. Very easy and sh so easy to have one of the one, one of the very mo uh, uh, most imp important questions answered we could find um, immediately the position next thing was to create a line of sight now it comes to the question uh, from how far can it be seen and how long can it be seen so we we decided to go with the view shed uh, uh, analysis in the view shed analysis you can see let me switch here to my uh, laser pointer. Here on the left hand side in this dialogue of the view shed uh, setup, and I apologize for the bad quality, but it was reduced due to this online conference. Uh, you see the transmitter elevation is uh, put as 40 meters height above ground, and the receiver elevation is at two meters above ground. Let's say two meters is something in between between the height of a truck driver and a car driver and then we we uh, we let uh, we have created a couple of uh, line of sight view shed analysis into different directions certainly the most important are to the uh, to the west here to dortmund and uh, to the east here to kassel very interesting and very nice help is the fact that we can um, set up an angle here, a swept angle, 
a start angle. So it, it, it starts at, in this case, at 80 degrees uh, from, the, uh, from, uh, from the point, from the uh, position, and then it sweeps 45 degrees. And it has a view radius of three kilometers that we could also set individually. And by giving this uh, data, we could um, uh, achieve an, um, an analysis where you can where you see that wherever this is blue on the ground, you can be sure that it can see it is can be seen from the tower position. So at the moment we do we do the view shed analysis analysis from the tower to the maximum distance to see where we can see the tower. We can also we did also the um, the analysis the analysis. Uh, uh, opposite around from the uh, from the driver's position to the tower, but at the end of the day, we found the analysis from the tower to the drive to the to the into into the direction of the uh, um, highway the most uh, sufficient and usable one. So wherever you can see this is marked with blue, you know that this uh, in this position and on this position of the highway, you can see the tower. And then the next step was quite easy. We just had to, well, again, I have to remove my laser pointer. We had to go along these uh, blue markings. We drew some lines. We did some uh, uh, length uh, uh, measures. And we divided all this um, uh, segment. We, we we combined all these uh, segments uh, together, and at the end of the day, it was a job for Microsoft Excel to analyze to analyze uh, how long and uh, from where, from which distance these uh, poles could be seen. So, excuse me for this uh, having this here in German, but I think it's it's quite easily to understand. Here in the bluish uh, uh, section, we have some base uh, uh, information given about the uh, advertising pole. This is the position, the height above ground, the height of the pole itself, the geo basis information, and uh, who was delivering. This is basically a very complicated German word for that government agency. And then on the left and the right hand side, you see the, in essence, the data. On the left-hand side, you see the uh, uh, the length of the line of sight from Dortmund, from the west, to this uh, advertising pole. And the total, the driver, sorry, the driver can see it on a length of 2.1 uh, kilometers. Uh, that's the distance that we flew. No, sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm mistaken. That is the distance that we analyzed. On this 2.1, uh, 2.2 kilometers, the advertising pole could be, is seeable viewable on 1.1 kilometer and at a, dis at a speed of 80 kilometers per hour, which is the normal speed for a truck in Germany, the truck driver can see it properly during 53 seconds. At 100 kilometers, it's 42 seconds, 120 kilometers, 36 seconds. And now you can estimate the Porsche driver maybe 15 seconds. Well, but that's the problem with driving too fast. And on the right hand, on the right side, you can see the approach from the east, where in total the the, the total uh, line of sight available is 2.8 kilometers. The tower is visible on 1.5 kilometers. And again, but here we have a very nice uh, line of sight of 71 seconds at 80 kilometers per hour. So this was the mathematical proof of the um, um, of this analysis. Uh, now we have to come back to uh, to the artwork. We have to go and see and deliver something the customer likes likes to see and can explain to the mayor of that village who is really concerned about the advertising poll. So instead of uh, getting a sort of ready-made uh, 3D uh, 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 model file, we received. Um, um, is a sketch from the manufacturer and uh, created this um, uh, this pole by ourselves. Uh, we have a very smart student in our organization who is uh, familiar with the uh, Sketchfab, and he created from the 
from the sketch that you can, you can see on the right hand side, uh, he created um, uh, some 3D models. You see here in this slide two, on the right hand side, the large one with the height of 40 meter, the 40 meter tower that is viewable up to two kilometers distance. And we explained that before. And on the left hand side, it's a 10 meter tower. And then this 10 meter towers is positioned in close proximity of the uh, truck center. But it makes sure that the truck driver always finds the right direction. Because um, the situation is simply that one truck center is not without competition. There are usually in neuralgic uh, uh, locations, there are typically more than one. And we want to make sure that our investment is uh, uh, done properly. And we want to dry, guide the truck driver to the right uh, truck center. So we have a second smaller tower in place. Um, the presentation was also done by video. I'm very sorry for not presenting this video here, but I don't want to take the risk to uh, uh, to crash the online system. Basically, it's the fly-through uh, uh, functionality in Global Mapper, where we could uh, where you can just uh, put yourself in the driver's seat and fly along the highway along a line that you create on the highway. You can uh, determine the line of uh, sight and the viewing angle of the car driver. In this uh, case, you can see that he always looks onto the towards the red uh, uh, object in the uh, on the horizon, which is basically the uh, the tower. And you can prove is visibly that uh, the tower can be seen on at that that but and at uh, that particular point during the uh, dr uh, uh, during driving along the highway. And this is actually the uh, almost the last slide of my presentation, uh, where you can see really the final 3D artwork with the, what we have created with the Global Mapper. The uh, the architects of the uh, truck center building also delivered um, uh, uh, their artwork as object file to us, and we were really happy to embed that uh, of, uh, object in the right position right into our model yeah you can see very nicely the building you can see even the flattened grounds that we have created on on the uh, and the architect has already planned the parking slots here on this uh, in this area so um, you can almost imagine you can really imagine how the uh, the truck center will look alike in the future So concluding, uh, for us, uh, Global Mapper for now two or three years is the absolute core tool in our uh, uh, geo information service uh, workflow. It's, um, it, I wouldn't say it replaced AutoCAD, but it's head ahead of AutoCAD using in our uh, company. We really love the tool. We started by loving only the import export features and the flexibility. Nowadays, we really love all these uh, pow powerful um, uh, possibilities uh, that uh, Global Mapper is uh, um, uh, offering us. We are not using the photogrammetry uh, uh, functionality yet, simply because our projects are really big and decent and complex. Um, well, that might even change in the future. Um, fact is, it integrates geodata from third parties easily. We can uh, we can uh, uh, import all these uh, large point clouds uh, and imagine 16 hectares area. That's a very very large point cloud, and we are so happy that the lidar module in Global Mapper can handle this easily and without crashing our hardware. And imagine we use really strong hardware, powerful hardware, for uh, running all these uh, processes. Um, Global Mapper has put us into the position of doing, of re almost replacing the classical land surveying process with a digital work. We, we do nowadays in these projects where we are hired to do UAV uh, flights and photogrammetry, we do not do too much uh, land surveying on the ground anymore. It's uh, it's basically the ground control points, the way we use Mr. Trimble 
and uh, some critical data, maybe uh, some areas where we cannot fly and we need some ground data below a tree or below a bridge. That might be the case, but everything that can be seen from the air, that's where we use Global Mapper directly for our uh, surveying uh, process. And together with all these new features that we have investigated with uh, in this marketing uh, use case, uh, we can even prove uh, mathematically that the geo information are right and that and we can display the data in a user-friendly, comprehensible 3D mode. We have news, uh, movies, we have screenshots, we have uh, we can do live uh, fly-throughs. The next uh, step would be then augmented reality and uh, virtual virtual reality, augmented reality. But I'm looking forward to find solution for that. Thank you very much, David. It's over to you. Thank you, Michael. We're, we're sitting here in the room monitoring you. Know, we're, we're fascinated by this. Uh, we also like the sound effects in the background, the actual vehicles driving along. That was perfect. That was a perfect uh, background soundtrack to your presentation. Um, we may, we <laughs> A couple of questions came in here. Um, let me see if I can pull off. Um, in terms of the data, you, you, you're obviously using UAV technology over there, and I think this was probably a question from somebody on this side of the Atlantic uh, asking about the regulation, any regulatory issues that need to deal with or had to deal with in this in terms of uh, is there a licensing process for being able to fly? That was one of the questions um, you know, in terms of sending a drone up, obviously near a very busy highway. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We uh, had a situation in Germany that we uh, they changed it uh, last year. Can you can you mute your uh, your speaker because I can hear myself uh, double. Uh, so in Germany, they we uh, we changed the legislation. Uh, now professional UAV uh, pilots need to be licensed, need to obtain a, f a pilot license, uh, have to have a special um, insurance in place have to follow certainly the, the general uh, regulation and uh, wherever we usually fly we need a special license because you're not allowed to fly closer than 100 meters to a highway or to a river a federal a water street federal highway federal whatever is completely prohibited and you need to ask for a special license and um, uh, well, we are usually the first on the ground. The second guys are the uh, uh, highway police <laughs> asking for our permission, but that's normal. Yeah, so it's highly regulated, and it's uh, it's not easy uh, to fly in such a critical situation, and it always causes high blood pressure to fly at 40 meters along the highway. So, so your data collection was done when there were our vehicles still on the highway. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We do uh, not cross the highway. We do not cross the highway because we are not allowed to do that. Okay. But we will fly along. Um, next question. Um, and again, I'll pull off, pull out a few here. Um, somebody just wanted to, to find out who the customer was. Who, who was this? Del who delivered? Well, I think you mentioned this in one of your later slides, but maybe you could uh, revisit that. Who was your customer in this project? Our customer, our general customer, is the investor, who builds the uh, the uh, who builds the uh, the truck centers and uh, this is all handled by a central project uh, management company and uh, all all participating parties are reporting basically to the project manager so we as the land surveyor uh, the architect uh, the planner uh, the uh, geologists um, all these parties and this is actually a question from the same person but uh, I, I guess a follow up um, what was the whatever the uh, government highway agency were they involved in this project? Did they have to? to uh, were they vested in in the data collection and the signage location? Is it? Uh, uh, is, are there government uh, components to this project? Uh, yeah, first of all, we need uh, certain permissions to fly. So starting with the simple uh, permission of the landowner. In this case, it's our customer who gives us the permission to fly above his land. We need certainly a permission from the local municipality, as these uh, projects uh, are always uh, very much politically driven and come in uh, uh, with uh, uh, with the permission of the local municipality. It's easy to get that uh, that license. 
But then we have to ask uh, every state uh, office of uh, uh, traffic control, traffic control state office, we have to apply with them uh, for the uh, uh, exception license to fly in very close proximity to the, uh, to the highway. And then certainly we also inform the local police or highway police station about our activity on site so that they know what's uh, what's going on okay i've got a few questions here that relate to the actual uh work that you did in the software um first of those is when you you had the view shed analysis and you showed some slides of that view shed analysis process um was were you using a dsm a surface model or a dtm in other words um i think the question is alluding to the fact that obviously the visibility of a sign is going to factor in things like trees and the question is how, how that was handled in Global Mapper. Yeah, exactly. We were using the uh, surface model. That means we consider the trees and buildings and any ob obstacle as present because it's uh, it's hindering our line of sight. Yeah, that's uh, clear. And uh, we can we can buy either that or that from the from the from the state office, either a surface model or terrain model. That's uh, up to you. Okay. Um, somebody asking about the 3D model. We saw how the 3D model uh, was created uh, using, I think you described him as a as a as a as a whiz kid, some uh, 3D expert. Question is how that file uh, was imported or rendered in Global Mapper, or how did you how did you get that to, to display in Global Mapper? It's uh, it's uh, unbelievable easy, unbelievably easy. I I don't share my screen anymore. Right? No, you, we're seeing your screen. <laughs> no, 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 it's not, not necessary. Um, uh, you, you just import that file. It's a, it's a, it's a dot .xyz file, and then you uh, uh, right-click uh, on the on the section, on the on the layer in in Global Mapper, and you extract it as um, as the height map, as a height as a height grid. Okay. That's it, and it takes um, a minute or two, depends on the amount of data. And then you have already uh, um, uh, a height uh, a height model that you can use for anything else. Perfect. Uh, and the final question for you, Michael, and thank you for taking the time to answer these. The final one is: How did you present the three D data to your customer? Uh, basically, pictures and movies. Pictures, pictures and mo movies, Excel sheet. That's it. What is it they say? A picture is worth a thousand words. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, well, thank you so much, Michael, and I really appreciate it. I know it's a little bit of a time difference for you over there. It's probably well into the evening, so we appreciate you taking the time uh, to share what you've done. And again, there are other questions. We will follow up or we'll give the, the questions to Michael, and he can follow up with you directly. But once again, thank you so much, Michael, for, for helping us and for, for participating today. Mm -hmm.